What's up everyone? So a lot of people they wonder about how safe is New York City at nighttime? Well, it's 11:30 at night on a Saturday and uh, I'm gonna be taking the subway to Queens and just giving you a little bit of a few pointers of what to do and some just good guidance. But I'm here in the Chinatown area. And uh, first we have some scaffolding. I don't usually like to go under these because they really restrict your movement. And uh, sometimes a lot of unscrupulous people can be hiding behind them or around the corners. And even though New York City at this time it's late, there's still a lot of people around. So you don't really need to feel too unsafe. But for those of you who are um, uncomfortable, then maybe calling a car service will be better for you. I'm here at Ludlow Street and Canal Street. There's a station not too far away from here on the F train called East Broadway. That one, while it is a good subway station for me to go to, sometimes tends to have some people lingering around there that are not the most uh, sound mind. I don't really like the East Broadway station Grand Street Station or Delancey Street Essex uh, stations. And I think uh, a lot of people who aren't of sound mind linger around in those stations because there's uh, mental health institutions around that area. Another really bad station in the subway system is in Harlem at Lexington Avenue and 125th Street. I think it's actually the worst one to uh, go to. But I'm going to walk my way over to the much larger Canal Street station. That one's usually the safest option in the Chinatown area to ride the subway. And uh, not only do you have to be wary of people who may be up to no good, but sometimes these drivers, they can be driving a little bit too fast and not paying attention to what's going on. Perfect example, the dangers of walking New York City late at night. And I was just mentioning about the poor drivers. Couldn't have timed that any better. So one of the good things about um, the subway is that you can stand where the conductor is supposed to stop and I'll point it out once I get to the station. But some general tips about walking New York City at night. It's better to go with a friend and with company. Hello. Pick subway stations which are known to be um, so have a lot of people. Yeah. 
I just had a drunk call me the F word. Just ignore him and continue walking. Looked over my shoulder to make sure he's not following me, which he's not. So he's all talk. Man, we're getting the uh, New York City treatment so far in this video. Perfect example of street safety and what to do. And I get it, it may be intimidating for a lot of people, which is why sometimes just ordering a car service may be uh, good, but car services at this time can cost a lot of money. Like, um, I just had a friend they were trying to get just 15 minutes from here to Brooklyn and the Uber price was $51. Sometimes these public parks at nighttime they'll have some people lingering in them so you don't want to be walking through them at nighttime as well and also if you can try to stay on streets that are well lit This section of Chinatown, I feel very comfortable with since I, I, it's a main street, there's a lot of people, and it's brightly lit. Not only do you not have to just worry about the cars, but there's also electric vehicles, bicycles, motorcycles that you have to look out for. And many of them may go on the sidewalk and pass you while you're not even paying attention. So it's really important to uh, be cognizant of that too. Things to uh, do to avoid getting hit by the scooters and the bicycles that may not be uh, driving in the best way is try not to uh, pass in narrow spaces like over here if you're walking here I'd rather not walk on this side but towards the middle of the sidewalk where there's more room for you to see on both sides this will reduce your chance of getting hit by a cyclist a scooterist the same goes for turning around the corners too. It's better to go into the middle of the sidewalk and then make the right or the left. If it's crowded, then I kind of can just go with the crowd because I doubt someone would uh, ride a bike or scooter on that crowded sidewalk. But it's when it's more empty that you have to be worried about. Hopefully the police are out there to catch a criminal. 
as we speak. Another thing too I have to warn you about, whenever you see those police cars flashing with the sirens going off, make sure you steer clear of them. Give them the right of way. Make sure you're not standing too close to the curb or the sidewalk because even though they have their sirens on, what they're doing is risky business and that's why they work as a police officer. Um, people should give way to the police officers, but sometimes they don't. And uh, there might be an accident between the cop car and the offending vehicle or whatever that'll cause the other to, to slide and hit the curb or whatever. And the police cars will go through red lights, they'll make quick right turns and you don't want to be there when it happens. Also, it's a good idea not to step off the curb like here and then look towards the right. What happens if there's a scooter or a bicyclist coming right there? And it's also not... It's not a good idea to walk between cars as well like over here if you're trying to cross the street many times this almost happened to me i was trying to cross the street like this and then as soon as i got here there's like a scooterist who came by and it was just centimeters from me getting hit so you don't want to do that as well <laughs> One thing at night which you have to be careful of as well are the sidewalks themselves and also the uh, sidewalk cellars, the cellar doors because sometimes they can be loose, you could trip. That's why it's also important to walk on a well-lit street as well. So you see what I'm doing, walking in the middle of the sidewalk, just in case there's someone standing here who might come at you or whatever. I mean, it's unlikely that something like that will happen, but you never know why take an unnecessary risk if you don't have to. And I know I'm making New York City sound like a less safe place than it is. I do believe the city is safe, but just by doing these tips will reduce your chance of being uh, attacked and may uh, save some serious injury. I knew that was going to happen. There's a bad pothole there. In fact, I'm going to show it. walking signal. Uh, yesterday there was a orange traffic cone behind this pothole but this is so hard to see that cars are just going right into it and damaging their tire and not just cars can go in here too people can walk in it uh, stumble so that's why it's also important to be looking before you uh, step you don't want to be a victim of going in there and you may end with a broken leg. I've also reported that, by the way, to the city to fix. I hope they could fix it soon. But yeah, Canal Street, I know there's a lot of problems with the road surface. And part of it may uh, go 
go back to when Canal Street was an actual canal to drain the Collect Pond. So there's a lot of moisture underneath the ground. So Canal Street Station, there's multiple entrances. There's one over there, which I don't like to go to because I need to take the Uptown N and W trains. And uh, if you get in over there, there's a section of the platform which narrows and I don't like being so close to the platform. So instead I go down this way where the passageway is much wider. While going down these subway steps too, in inclement weather especially, make sure you look before you step because I've seen many accidents where people slip and fall down these steps. So over here, I like to take the turnstiles over here because they're away from the platform tracks. And uh, I'm gonna make my way this way to the Uptown and Queens platform. Once again, don't run for the train when it comes because you could fall down the stairs. I've seen people rush for it and didn't end well. I know it sounds uh, sounds contrast to uh, not run for the train when it comes into the station, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I do it because I'm careful. All right, here's the Uptown and Queens platform. All right, let's see. Uptown N and Q will stop at the upper level R platform during the weekend. Trains will resume regular service. So another thing to be cognizant about is to know where your trains will be stopping. So there's going to be no trains on this platform. And unfortunately, as the MTA, as efficient as it is, there's nobody here telling people that there's no train coming at all or whatever. I do hear a work train coming though. Maybe that's upstairs on the, uh, on the IRT platform. But the trains are all going to be stopping over there. And uh, I don't really like this platform because it's so close to the, to the edge. Try to stick as close as the wall as possible to avoid slipping and falling onto the tracks. Or uh, worse yet, I don't like to think about this, but sometimes people do get pushed onto the tracks. So there's only uh, downtown service on this platform. Hope the NTA gets down here and tells people that there's no train down here. It's really unacceptable or use the PA system or We go.
And unfortunately, many of those people, they're still clueless and will still be waiting there. They need a physical person there to guide people to the right platform. So this is the way you need to go to get to the uptown platform. That's another thing that uh, you should look into as well if you have time is to know what the service changes are so you avoid this kind of hassle in the first place. What's going on here? So here, I want to stay... Some loud people, that's all. Makes it hard to narrate though, but at late night, I like to stay where the conductor is stopping, which is this checkered uh, board. Every station has this checkered board, and this is where the conductor's car stops. Now we gotta wait for the train, and um, on less busier routes, Having the employee in the same car with you is some good advice. I won't really recommend for people to be out there peeking to see where the train is coming because it's not going to make the train come any faster. Instead, do the smart thing and look at the timetable and stand back. You know uh, what happened just now? I'm getting an alert on my Citizen app. Look at this. This is why there were all those police cars before. There was a man slashed in the leg. Police are searching for a man who fled the scene in Chinatown. It's scary. So I hope all these safety tips come in handy for you. I believe New York City is a safe city, but doing these tips will just reduce the risk, the chances that you'll be involved in something. train is still four minutes away. Now in regards to uh, subway etiquette when you're on the subway car itself, it's not advisable to make eye contact with people for a long time, otherwise people may think that is a threat and people in the not right mind may come up to confront you about it. Also, if a subway car comes by and there's nobody in it, meanwhile the entire platform is crowded, more often than not, there's a reason why you should not be going into that subway car. Sometimes it's because the air conditioner is not working, or because there's someone in there that smells really, really bad. Two minutes for the train to come.
Ryan one. I'm gonna pick the subway with the open door and it's not crowded. So as you can see, I'm pretty safe in this subway car because there's tons of people. What's up? Hello. No crimes happening with this guy watching. I'm doing a video on late night safety with uh, walking around at night, taking the subway and stuff. It's a good video because I already caught like crazy drivers and there was like cops chasing down canal. <laughs> in general, it's not a good idea to look at people directly in the eyes and make eye contact in the subway. What are some other general uh, subway tips? Don't hold the doors. Don't uh, don't lean on them, even though you can. But if it opens up, you'll be falling back. <laughs> also, in regards with seats, um, I don't recommend seating at the ones on the ends of the subway car because uh, more often than not, homeless people may. Be uh, sleeping on them, and I'll be super dirty. If you uh, had to, it's better to sit in one of the seats in the middle. That's the best advice I can give you there. And uh, do not pull the emergency brake unless someone's clothes is like trapped in the door or something. If there's something that happens in the car then the best thing for you to do is to uh, try to move away from the car if possible, switch trains, uh, switch train cars. Um, some of the newer trains, they have an emergency intercom. You could use that. As you can see, it's uh, Saturday night here in New York. You don't really have to worry about crime. There's just so many people inside taking the train. Many people think that Late night in the train, um, in New York, there's barely anyone riding the train, but if you ride on busy lines like this, it's better to have more people around. One general subway etiquette that I want to advise you of is uh, if a train is crowded, it's better for you to step off the uh, car if you're near the door to let people off and then you can get back on. The train will depart a lot faster and you'll be less cramped as a result.
when it's uh, late at night like this, the subways may also be running uh, less frequently. So that's why it's better to wait for the train in a well-lit area away from the platform edge. And if you can, you can stand by the conductor board, as I showed you before. That way, you'll always be guaranteed to have somebody um, in you in the subway car, if possible. Also, I forgot to mention this, but the turnstile, this is an area that's especially dangerous when getting into the subway system because um, you're trapped between the person behind you and also the fare gate. So be sure to have your method of payment available when you reach the turnstile before you go in. You don't want to be spending too much time there looking for your card or your phone. Also, you want to make sure if you're by the door that your bags, your backpack doesn't get caught in the door because I've seen that happen before and it'll get dragged along with the train. Look, someone's tie, someone got a, a tie uh, loss. Maybe their tie got caught in the door and they had to get rid of their tie. And uh, another thing too is never ever go on the subway tracks for any reason unless authorized by the authorities or instructed to because you definitely do not want to get electrocuted, hit by a train, and sometimes there's switches on the tracks too which move when the trains come. Your leg can get caught in it. Also about pickpockets. You may think the train is safer with a lot of people, but it may make it easier for pickpockets to operate on the subway. So make sure you're aware of your valuables at all times. Keep them close to you. Um, people with pocketbooks, make sure that um, they're in front of you and not behind you, because you won't be able to feel if someone's reaching into your bag or not. Also, never keep your phone in your back pocket because I've seen pickpockets easily take a phone from a back pocket or any kind of valuables in the rear. And oftentimes, these will use cover to steal items from people. I've seen people use a giant newspaper and then reach their hand underneath the newspaper or a coat. There's a lot of ways that these can get creative. And not only in the subway too, but the pickpocketing advice goes for the streets as well.
we're here at this station, um, it's kind of crowded. Since I'm the closest to the exit, I'm gonna get off here, wait for people to get on, um, get off, and then get back on. So this is what you do: it's proper subway etiquette. Let people get off. Actually, kid. Hey. Take care, my brother. Take care, man. You too. Oh. Now we get back on. And that's the way you do it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention why. Another reason why you shouldn't go onto the subway tracks. Rats. And even though they may seem cute and fluffy, a lot of them may be carrying diseases. And uh, you certainly don't want a rat biting you. They could also be on the platforms too, in the station mezzanines, and on the streets. One important thing about the subway as well is that cell phone service is usually reliable when you're on the platform, but in between stations, more, more often than not, you're not gonna have cell phone service. We just saw a worker there on the tracks. These workers, they risked their lives going down there. But I really appreciate them for the job that they do to make the subway system better and to maintain it. Here's the Times Square station. This is the busiest station in the subway by far. And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be getting off here to transfer trains or go to Times Square area. So let's get off and wait to get back on. That's the way it works. The train emptied out a lot since I got on at Canal Street, but there's still a good amount of people in this car. Always try to go where the people are, that will reduce the risk of you getting into a crime. And it's just good advice in general. train is traveling at slower speeds just because there's workers on the tracks. Oh 
parts of the subway are over a hundred years old so you can imagine the amount of maintenance required just to keep the system running I think this is the extent of the uh, maintenance work. I don't see the subway uh, work crew anymore. That's why the subway is also traveling at faster speeds too. But on the weekends, that's where, when most service disruptions happen, also late night hours. And right now it's both, the weekend and late night. garbage underneath the staircase like that that's one thing you want to be wary of too don't step on garbage because you may lose your balance and that's something that you don't want to do while waiting for the train Actually, this station on the Broadway line 57th Street this is actually my preferred subway station to get onto this line if I'm ever in the Midtown area to me it just seems the most open and the most safe many of the other stations they are uh, narrow or they have a lot of litter but 57th Street stations usually pretty clean oh another thing I didn't bring up is uh, earbuds I know a lot of people like wearing earbuds and uh, they're great because they allow you to really focus on uh, 
um, your task, whether it's listening to music, getting work done, a podcast, but just make sure when you um, wear the earbuds, be sure to pay attention to your surroundings because it doesn't completely remove yourself from the environment. It may help in certain situations because uh, people don't think that you're paying attention to them, so they may not target you in that way, like if you're walking down the street, um, somebody who's like handing something out that may be up to no good, may want to ignore you because you have earbuds in. But it doesn't work in all cases. Next stop is a pretty busy station, Lexington Avenue and 59th Street. Actually, the train filled right off from, uh, from Times Square Station. notice what I'm doing right now. I don't really feel comfortable recording in the subway that much because people are really standing in one spot all the time. That's why I like to do my walking videos because I'm always moving. People don't really think I'm focusing on them. That's why I'm focusing my camera out into the tracks and on the platform. So I'm gonna get off here, let people get on. Okay. See the train's pretty crowded now. Sometimes uh, when a train's this crowded like this, it might be better to take your backpack off or to put yourself in a position where you utilize the least space to make room for other people. Like I said before, I don't really like recording on the subway because some people may not like that they're being recorded. Especially when you focus on like one part for a long amount of time. I mean, these people just are sitting here, standing here, and they just want to get to where they want to go. That's why many may want it, may take offense to it, even though it is a public space. The subway just passed under the East River and now we're in Queens, New York City's borough of Queens, which is the most diverse borough of New York City. Also, I believe it has the best food too. I expect a lot of people to get off 
uh, at this next station, Queens World Plaza, to transfer to the 7 train. See, it's a really popular station. doing work on the uh, block between 27th Street and 26th Street. I know the developer is going to uh, knock that building down and replace it with a multi-story building with a new pedestrian bridge to Queensboro Plaza. It's my the first time I've seen it since coming back to New York.
actually um, I just noticed the announcements on this train are not working so uh, you really do have to pay attention it hasn't worked ever since I got on the train stop 30th Avenue station here we go with one of the most dangerous parts of the subway and that's the staircase be very careful where you step and um, it can get kind of tricky sometimes if someone stops midway in the staircase and uh, don't be that kind of person who just stops in the middle of the staircase wait till you completely go down or don't even go down the staircase until you're finished doing what you need to do and the momentum of people's steps can also change when they get onto this platform from the steps so you have to be careful of that too. Especially when there's inclement weather or when the steps are wet. All right, everyone. I'm gonna conclude my video here. I hope these tips help you to become a better person to reduce your risk of injuring yourself or being the victim of a serious crime. These late night tips are useful to anybody. But if you appreciated my facts about staying safe in New York, then hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye everyone. See you soon.